Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we're talking about the mahar or the dowry. There are misconceptions and, and confusions regarding this issue, so let's take a brief look at this matter, inshallah. Very simply, the mahar is what the groom gives to the bride when they get married, and it's the right of the bride. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَآتُ النِّسَاءَ صَدُقَاتِهِنَّ نِحْلَ And give the women, meaning the women who you're about to marry, their dowry with a good heart. If you notice here, Allah uses the word sadaq, and sadaq comes from the word sidq, which means truth. So the mahar or sadaq is a testament to how truthful and sincere the man is in his desire to marry this woman and to fulfill his obligations. The mahar really is a symbol of respect and honor for this woman that he's about to marry. Now, according to most of the scholars, the mahar should be something which is tangible, but Islam doesn't stipulate an exact amount nor a, a maximum or minimum amount. That being said, there are a couple of things to watch out for when it comes to the mahar. Firstly, the mahar should be simple, convenient, and easy. The Prophet ﷺ said, خَيْرُ الصَّدَاقِ أَيْسَرُهُ The best of the dowries is that which is the most easy. Meaning the best type of mahar is that which is affordable for the groom. The mahar, is not, the mahar shouldn't be a burden upon him. The mahar should be something that he can afford. And obviously this differs from person to person depending on their financial status and so on. So yes, the groom should be as generous as possible when it comes to the mahar, but he should not commit to a mahar which he cannot afford. He should give what he's able to give without it being a burden. And also, it is best to give the mahar immediately. It may be permissible to delay the mahar, it may be permissible to give part now and part later, but he should give it immediately at the time of the nikah. Sometimes, uh, such a high amount gets stipulated to be paid a future time that the, that, the, that the groom is never able to afford it. And he ends up never giving this type of mahar. And subhanAllah, that obligation doesn't get fulfilled. And sometimes, subhanAllah, and this happens sometimes, a person gets pressured into giving a mahar and he cannot speak up and say, you know what, I can't afford this mahar. And because he's pressured into this and he feels the pressure of it later, he ends up with resentment either towards the bride or towards her family or whoever else, and this leads to problems down the line. Lastly, uh, to the parents, I want to say, listen, don't make the mahar an obstacle between two people getting married. The mahar is not the price of your daughter. It's not how much she's worth. It's simply a token of a man's desire to marry this woman. It's never going to be equal to how much your daughter is truly worth. Also, some people, subhanAllah, they become boastful about the mahar. They start comparing the mahar of their daughter to the mahar of other girls and so on and so forth. And subhanAllah, this leads to arrogance, it leads to problems, and it leads to dissent and issues, and that should never ever be done. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Until next time, inshaAllah ta'ala, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.